Why, hello there. Hopefully your quiz went well that you just took. Um, you have about six examples here I'm going to do on this video for the notes, and it's all about geometric means. Um, we did problems with arithmetic series where we talked about arithmetic means. That meant numbers between uh, terms in an arithmetic sequence. And that's what geometric means are. It just happens to deal with a geometric sequence instead. So by definition, a geometric mean or geometric means are terms between two given terms of a geometric sequence. All right, so <clears throat> the problems we're going to do here, um, a lot of them are very similar, but there's little, there's little twists between all of them, and that's why there's about six examples. So number two says, insert two geometric means between 9 and 576. What that means is there's a geometric sequence with four terms because it says there are two between 9 and 576. So I want to find the two numbers between 9 and 576 that would make this a geometric sequence. And so similarly to the arithmetic problems we did, um, we need to find the common ratio, and whatever it is, multiply to 9 twice, and those are the numbers in between 9 and 576. So we're going to use the geometric mean formula, and that's going to be, well, 576 equals, the first term is 9, times r to the n minus 1. Well, n is 4, so r to the third. Here's the equation we set up to find r. Divide both sides by 9, so 64 equals r to the third. And then from here, cube root both sides, and r equals 4. So I know the common ratio, and so I could just multiply 9 by 4, and I know 36 is the first one. Multiply that by 4, and I know 144 to the second one. So there are my two geometric means. And you could self-check this because if you would multiply 144 by 4, you should get 576, and you do. So it just multiplies through by 4 each time. Number 3 says find the geometric mean between 8 and 392. So they're saying that there, there's one number between 8 and 392. There's different ways to do this problem. Um, I'm going to do it using the formula. But like I said, there are a couple different ways to go about this. But here's what I'm going to do. I always like to put a space to represent the numbers in between. And I can go through the problem very similar to number 2. But there is a difference on this one. So I know 392 is the last term. I know 8 is the first term, times r to the n minus 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2, divide by 8, so 392 divided by 8 is 49. Here's where the wrinkle comes into play. When I square root, and think about when you square root an equation, there's a symbol you always have to remember to put the plus or minus symbol. So r could be plus or minus 7, meaning I don't know in this particular case if the common ratio is 7 or if it's negative 7. So there's actually two answers to this problem. Even though there's one number between 8 and 392, r could be two different things, which means if I multiply 8 by 7 or negative 7, I get two different answers. So it could be 56 or negative 56, so in the space we just put plus or minus 56 because we square rooted there. On the last one, it, on the last problem, r couldn't be negative 4, because think about why. If I multiplied 9 by a negative, I would get a negative number. If I multiplied that by a negative, I'd get a positive. And then if I multiplied that by a negative, this 576 should be negative, and it's not. Where on this one we just did, if I multiply 8 by negative 7, it's a negative. If I multiply that by a negative, I do end up with a positive like I should. So when the exponent is even, um, that adds a little extra thing to think about. Number four says find the geometric mean between A and B. That means there's a number between A and B. And I want to find the geometric mean. 
So I'm going to do just like we did the last one. I know B is the last one. I know A is the first term. R to the n minus 1. So R squared. Divide both sides by A. And square root. So again, I have plus or minus the square root of B over A. Now, think back to your... Um, rationalizing days, if I want to rationalize this, I'd multiply by radical A over radical A. So I get radical AB over A. That's what the square root of B over A is if I rationalize the denominator. So that's R. So what that means is to find the number in the middle here, I need to multiply A by this common ratio here. And so think about it. If I multiply A by plus or minus square root of AB over A, the A's just cancel out. And so the geometric mean is plus or minus the square root of AB, which is really what happened back in this last example. It's the same problem, so I could have done plus or minus the square root of, and I could have multiplied 8 and 392 together. And if you go ahead and do that in your calculator, you would get plus or minus 56. All right. <clears throat> A couple more. Find all the possible values of x that make the sequence x minus 1, 2x, 5x plus 3 a geometric progression. So they're, they're saying they want to know what would x be that would make this be a geometric sequence. So I'm going to set up my sequence. I'm going to put x minus 1, comma, 2x, comma, 5x plus 3. Now, I can actually set up a proportion on this problem. Because here's what I know to be true. I know that in between these, I need the common ratio to be the same both times. What that tells me is, well, I'm going to back up a little bit. There's a problem on your quiz, and there was a problem on your homework a couple classes ago where this was an arithmetic series right here, or a sequence, and you had to find D. You had to take the second one minus the first one. Similar idea, but now it's geometric. I need to find R. So I'm not going to subtract. I'm going to divide. So here's what I know. If I take 2x divided by x minus 1, that'll find me the common ratio to this problem. But I have another case. I also know if I divide 5x plus 3 divided by 2x, I should get the same ratio. If I take the second divided by the first and the third divided by the second, I should get the same number both times. That means these two fractions are equal. I could put an equal sign between them. Now I have an equation to solve. I have a proportion to solve. So I can cross multiply. So 4x squared, that's 2x times 2x, equals, well, over here I'm going to multiply 5x plus 3 and x minus 1 together. And in foiling, I get 5x squared plus 3x minus 5x, so minus 2x minus 3. So now I have a quadratic equation to solve, so I want it to equal 0. So I want to move this 4x squared to the right, so 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 3 factor x minus 3 times x plus 1 and so x could equal 3 x could equal negative 1 there's two possible x values now I'll go back to the question go back to what the question was asking so the question states find all possible values of x that make the sequence geometric. So there's two answers here. x could equal 3, x could equal negative 1. And you can check. Based on the x value you use, you'll get two different sequences, but both turn out to be geometric. And I'll show that here. Let's say we plug 3 in for x. So let's say we do 3 and plug that in for x up here. So my, my geometric sequence would be, well, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, 15 plus 3 is 18. 
So if I use 3 for x, notice this sequence, 2, 6, 18, the ratio is 3. If I put negative 1 in for x, let's see what happens. I would get negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. So here the ratio is just 1. So it's still geometric, but it's just being multiplied by 1 every single time. So two different x values make this sequence geometric, but you get two different sequences based on the one you pick, but both work. Last one. Find the three geometric means between 7 fourths and 28. Love all fractions. So I have 7 fourths. I know I'm going to have three numbers in between. And then 28 is last. So that's what it means by three geometric means between 7 fourths and 28. There's three numbers between 7 fourths and 28 that make this geometric. Well, I'm going to use the formula. So I know 28 is the last term, 7 fourths is the first term, times r to the n minus 1, there's five terms, so r to the fourth, and I solved this. I would multiply both sides by the reciprocal, so multiply both sides by 4 sevenths, and so that's going to be, let's see, 4, 1, 16 equals r to the fourth. Now, when I take the fourth root of both sides, that's just like square rooting. We always focus on square rooting. You put plus or minus. Well, for fourth root, you do also any even root. So if I take the fourth root of 16, it's 2, but I need to remember plus or minus. So the common ratio could be 2. It could be negative 2. That means there's going to be two different geometric sequences. So let's first assume that r is 2. Okay, if r is 2, and I multiply 7 fourths by 2, then I'm going to get, let's see, times 2, so 14 fourths, so 7 halves, times 2 is 7, times 2 is 14. So this is the first possibility, 7 halves, 7, 14. Let's assume r is negative 2. Well, now that just changes a couple signs. So if I multiply 7 fourths by negative 2, I get negative 7 halves. If I multiply that by negative 2, I get positive 7 again. And if I multiply that by negative 2, I get negative 14. And if I would multiply that by negative 2, I'd get positive 28 like I should. So there are two different sets. If you wanted to just put plus or minus 7 halves, comma 7, comma plus or minus 14, that would work too. Um, but there you have it. So, you guys can go on Canvas, you can pull up the assignment, um, try those problems, and la-di-da. Peace.